What's going on, guys? Andre Hagel Jr. back here from Client Ascension, and we got my boy Kenan for Student Spotlight interview, bro. This is a really cool moment for both of us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Andre. I've been waiting for this moment ever since I joined Client Ascension. It's so great to be here. So like, thank you for the opportunity, brother. I appreciate it. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely, bro. So if you're listening, and this is going to be a really cool story because Kenan and his business partner at the time, Farouk, they joined Client Ascension from my dad's home country in Lebanon, which was really shocking to me because I visited Lebanon a couple times recently. And if you're at all following like politics or just what's going on in the world, like, you know, Lebanon's going through an economic crisis and, and there's just not a whole lot of money in the country right now. And so like when I saw someone from Lebanon, pay, you know, multiple thousands of dollars to join a program like Client Ascension, like I was I was shocked, bro. I was like, this doesn't make sense. This can't be right. So we'll, we'll dive into that story. And then also for the audience, we're going to do a really big reveal for the first time ever, maybe halfway through this episode or towards the end, just to keep you waiting on the edge of your seat. We're going to do a really big reveal, something that we've never shared before that you guys have been asking about, or a lot of you have been asking about and wondering about. So stay tuned for that. But put that to the side. Talk to us, bro. When did you join Client Ascension and how the hell did you even hear about Client Ascension? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we joined Client Ascension back in December 2022. We saw one video for Dan. Like, we didn't even know who Daniel was. We just like, who's this, you know, called even wizard guy? Like, he seems really cool. And it was like super, you know, what's it called? Like, uh, it's like in your face kind of marketing. And that was like the first time I ever saw like, that kind of marketing. It was like, oh, shit, this guy speaks to me. Like, I, I remember the video was like, if you're just chilling in home, like jerking off to Call of Duty and the idea of making money, you're a brokey. And I'm like, oh shit, this guy, he hit the, hit the soft spot. So I'm like, <laughs> Is that what you're what? doing? <laughs> so, 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 sorry, bro. <laughs> no, but we, we were like, we were making good money from the previous agency, which was a marketing agency. So like we, we had the money and we had a lot of, you know, a, a big team and we had like a lot of uh, things going for us, but we needed like to scale, like we need to really, really scale that shit. So like we watched that video of Daniel and, and Farouk was like, yo, we need to join Client Ascension. Like the fuck is Client Ascension? It's this cold even wizard guy. He is like, he's doing really good. They have this agency where they teach people they have to scale. They have this guarantee. And like they, ref they refund you if, you if you don't like him. Like, they, will they actually refund? It's like, you know, they refund you. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, let's do it. He's like, but well, there's an option. We either go six months or like a year. So we're like, let's fuck it. Let's take a year. We don't, we're not going to show up like brokers. Just like, let's go in with a bank. So we joined Client Ascension. And bro, that was like a pivotal moment in, in everybody's life in Lebanon. And we'll get to, that, get to that point and later in the story. It was like, that was like a, such a pivotal moment for like everyone involved in that story. So we joined Client Ascension and the first time, like as soon as we joined was just like instantly, we started like fixing a lot of shit. We started, you know, improving a lot of things. And it, it was just like a no brainer. It's, it's so obvious when you think about it, but like when someone like who's done that shit and he tells you like how you should do it and how you can fix these things, we're like, oh shit. It's so smart. And we instantly saw, like, we started scaling. We started doing really good. But then that market, like, it, it fumbled really bad. And it, it was such, like, a bad moment in that market. We wanted to transition. And me and Farouk didn't want to do the same thing. Like, he wanted to do, like, a different path. So we both started different agencies within Client Ascension. And we're both, like, pre doing pretty well for, you know, starting an agency from scratch. Again, it's been pretty awesome. And I'm, I'm super thankful. Dude. It's such a cool story because I think this is the first time we've ever had a double case study, meaning we had <laughs> one team or one student join and then they break off halfway into the program and both start their own successful companies. It's like the cool thing. And, and that first company was successful as well. I remember, could, could you explain more about what that business was and kind of where it was at coming into the program and then where the program helped take it? And then we already got the idea of like why you guys kind of abandoned that project and wanted to start fresh. But like, I think the backstory of anguish is really cool as well, because like, again, you'd have no idea or I had no idea. I would have never guessed that there's a successful marketing agency in the sneaker Twitter space right in the middle of Lebanon. Right. So talk a little bit about what anguish did, because I think it's helpful for the audience to know, yeah. like, what was the actual business you came into client Ascension with and what were some things client Ascension helped you with, with that business specifically? Cause I remember you showed up to like my operations coaching calls to get help with onboarding and so much more. Perfect. Yeah, of course. 
So we were running a, you know, kind of like a fractional CMO agency, but we didn't know what, what that was before. So we just called it a marketing agency, but we did email marketing, we did social media marketing, we did funnels to the email market, and then we sold people there because that market is, is built around the out of stock model. So like you, you can't outright like sell in public. So you just have to keep it low key in the email marketing space. That, that was like our, you know, trick in the market that nobody knew how to do because they used to focus on B2B sales, like go to other groups and sell like a group buy kind of thing where they have to partner up with other groups. But we just created something new where we, you sort of have the out of stock model, but in reality, you're just selling 24 seven and was working really well. So we worked with a couple of bots, like the top dogs in the agency and, and that market, I mean, and we were doing like really well. I think we were around like 20 to 30 MRR consistently because we did a lot of ref share deals with the retainers. And we built like a huge team in that one. We had like 15 employees at one point and it was just all Lebanese. We had a local office. We were doing a proper company. It was really fun. It was really good to have that. And then, you know, what we did was like, we, it was kind of like crazy because we suffered through a lot before joint client ascension, not just from the operations aspect, just at the fulfillment in general, because we had this economic crisis, power crisis. Like we had one hour of electricity tops per day. So we had one to work hour on- of electricity per day. Yeah, and that was like on a good day you had one hour because like it was such a crazy time. So we had to like this spend as you're scaling an agency twenty to yeah, thirty. That was, that was early in the days, like when we were first started. So what we did, like we put me and Fer, we put all our money together, and he sent me to Turkey so we can, I can sit there and like try to do the fulfillment there because I had electricity there, and I was living on like a hundred dollars per month and just eating whatever I can, just like we can just you know get through this. We came back from Turkey and it, like in three months or two months, and we land our first big. Buy-in, but we made like 40k the first month just from ref share with that guy it was it was so insane because as i said like we nobody did that email marketing thing in that, in that space it was just like a blue ocean so we just like instantly capitalized like a bubble the way it burst so it was crazy and then we we used that money like a couple of months there joint plan ascension it was just like a perfect timing and then as soon as i like, joint plan ascension, like oh shit this is how you actually onboard the client because we, we did everything just like Casually, it was just like, oh, it was chaotic before I saw your structure. And it was bro, so good. We hired CSM, we hired, you know, onboarding people. I started delegating more because the company revolved a lot around me and Farouk just doing everything. And we didn't even have a structure. Like, well, you talk about the three pillars, like fulfillment, marketing, and uh, sales. We didn't know about that. Just like, I did a little bit of marketing, I did a little bit of sales, and he did, like, we did a little bit of everything. So, like, oh, look, you're good at this, I'm good at this. Let's, mm-hmm. you know, segregate these two roles, like three roles. And ever since we did that, bro, we scaled, like we almost doubled before the market died. And then as soon as the market died, we broke up and we started different things. So crazy, bro. So crazy. Like the conditions that you had to work through to still be able to accomplish what you guys accomplished with that agency is, is inspiring, right? I mean, I, I know guys that and myself included that have like the best working conditions, like electricity 24 seven. I, I never have to think about electricity cutting mm-hmm. off ever. Like if my Wi-Fi goes down for like three minutes, I have a fit. Like I throw, I throw a tantrum. So like to have electricity for one hour out of the day and then having to completely relocate to a new country just to be able to keep the lights on and, and keep the agency alive is it's amazing, bro. I think as soon as the first time I heard the story, that's when we, we really became boys. And then I'm not sure the exact timeline, but you guys broke off. Farouk started more of like a video design agency, which was crushing it. I know List Kit got a bunch of videos from that. And, and he manages a lot of our social medias now. And then you started to do some work for us at List Kit. You were our first customer success manager, handling you know support tickets and intercom and really just building the foundation for what the customer success team is now. And then you basically restarted an agency, Remotely X, which you can talk more about. But like, how did Client Ascension and, and the things that you learned in the program and the connections, I think more than anything for you, especially, it was the connections and the people you met. How did all of that help you start an agency again from zero? Yeah, if I can summarize my experience with Client Ascension and how I managed to restart an agency is the community. Like, bro, as soon as I started Remotely X again, which like, all of my clients were just from client ascension. I didn't do no Twitter marketing, no cold emails, nothing. Just like they know me in client ascension. I already know the guys. And like I offered like, you know, free trials and that kind of stuff. And, and it's just popped off ever since then. And it was just started hiring one after the other. And then my first hire was actually before remote the when I when you hired my brother Jad as a student success coach. That was my first like remotely X hire. 
And after that, I joined your team as, you know, CA Twitter. I started handling that, which is that that's the big reveal we want to start. Bro, that's the big reveal. That's the big reveal. <laughs> oh, my God. I just realized that. <laughs> yeah, because oh a lot of people ask, like, who's handling CA Twitter? Because, like, I always troll people around. And, and it's, it's shocking because, like, the guy from Lebanon who has no connection to the U.S. is handling a U.S.-based Twitter. And then he's doing the memes. He's doing his relate, relatable content. It's just crazy for a lot of people, including myself. It is what it is. And, you know, when we started Remotely X, I just relied heavily on the community. And I was just starting getting sales from there and just, you know, talking to people, connecting to people. And on top of all that, just like when you have that foundation of client ascension, when you've watched those videos, when you've done it before, when you've seen, like, you have these amazing coaches to back you up and you can just, like, get quick answers for anything that you have, any bottleneck. It's just, it's, it's, it's an easy recipe. Like, it's so simple. Like, just ask the people who've done it before you. And th that's all it takes. Yeah. Dude, I love what you said. Community is number one for sure. And it's cool, right? Because like you said, we hired your brother, Jod, as a student success coach over at Client Ascension. That was one of our first Lebanese hires. We have Cynthia, who's our community manager at Client Ascension, who's my cousin from Lebanon. We have you, who manages the Client Ascension Twitter account. That was the big reveal. Because I get the question all the time, like the Client Ascension <laughs> account on Twitter, it's like the only company page on Twitter that people actually follow and engage with. Because everyone else is like corporate BS, like it's boring tweets. It, it's mostly automated. They're doing a bunch of links. But like the Client Ascension Twitter account is like fun to follow and banter with back and forth. And so people are always like, who the hell is like managing <laughs> this? Because the clapback sometimes or the memes sometimes are just like so funny that it's like, dude, like who came up with this? And the answer <laughs> is cannot. And that's like a testament to the quality of talent and how assimilated Lebanese culture is with U.S. culture. And it's why I've hired, you know, the last 16 team members at ListKit and at Client Ascension from Lebanon, which feeds into, you know, what you're doing, obviously, with Remotely X and, and this Lebanese talent recruiting agency. I just think there's so much to be said about the quality of talent that you can find in Lebanon and, and not just on that side of like, how can you benefit from the talent, but also the opportunities you can provide for these people and, and especially tougher times. And maybe not that they're used to, but just in general, compared to where some other countries in the world are at that people are located in inclined ascension. So yeah, dude, it's really cool to see. So talk about, talk a little bit about that as well, because we started having you manage the client ascension Twitter account as a role. And then you started at Lyska as, as a customer success manager. So like, how did both those roles, what are some things you learned working at both companies that you now apply to what you're doing at Remotely X, whether it was working with me or Oliver, or Daniel, Christian, Dan, what are some things you apply now? hundred percent, bro. Look, working with you guys is just a different level. It's on a different level. Like I'm being super honest. It's not like your typical company. It's not like your typical agency. These guys know what they're doing. When you're involved with with them and you're actually like, you know, you, you're someone who's, who wants to learn, not just doing the work just to get some money and, and you know, be on with your day. Like, you no, know, you're, you're there to learn. You ask the right questions. You're helping. You're trying to be part of the integral team. So like just watching you, how you operate, how you talk to your team, how you give, let's say, bonuses, how you do structure your scorecards, how you structure the role, how you react in certain scenarios. I know we had this, you know, I had this problem with this kid with that one time and you handled that, that, that thing really perfectly. So like, okay, like this guy, this is how I should act when I'm talking to my people. So like this, that, that was like one of the, one of the most integral things that I learned working with you, just because how you interact with your team, how you build a team that you love, not just said build, build a team that can get the, the job done. You, because if you work with people you like, bro, it's going to be so much more fun than just having a team of VAs or like, you know, people you can't connect with. And that's part of like how we, I translated that into remote DX. Like I want to help us. That's my slogan. I help you build teams you don't hate. Because like a lot of people, they talk about this, like I have these couple of VAs that do the job. I don't like them so much. I have this lot of friction with them. They understand me. It's like, okay, bro, then this is where I come in and I will help you build a team that you actually enjoy and you want to have a connection with. And you were talking about, you know, hosting that small party for Lebanese, your Lebanese team, your huge Lebanese team. It's like inviting them all to show on us. So that's like the kind of place you want to work with. Like a CEO that actually thinks about his team, wants to help his team. Like he wants to make sure that they're having the best life. And that's what, that's why I said when I started this call is that join us joining client ascension was a pivotal moment for all the Lebanese people. Cause like ever since then, like fast forward to when I started remotely X, we've so far placed around 40 people from Lebanon in different agencies and 15, 16, just in your agency. So like all these people benefit from us joining client ascension. Like we're helping the economy get back on its feet just by us joining client ascension. It was just that, you know, decision that maybe we didn't think it's going to have that long-term effect on everyone, but like 
bro, I have a baby now. I'm, I'm married. Most of the people that you've hired are starting like careers. They're actually getting, some of them are getting married. You know, like Kasim and the other boys, like you're actually helping people, you know, have another chance in life. They don't have to leave their country and have to become immigrants. Now they can show at their own place and, you know, just become actually a valued member of society and, you know, contributing to getting back to the economy at this place. So that's what, why I keep saying like, you know, client ascension is the fucking goat and I will die on that <laughs> hill is that we, I owe most of my success to first God and then client ascension. It was like just being around you guys and being around colors. Cause I had the opportunity to go, to go travel with you to Portugal, Lisbon, spend yeah. a week with you guys. Like that was the most fun I've, I've ever had in like my entire life. Cause like you guys are not just work oriented. You know how to live, you know how to have fun. And that's, that's also something I learned is that it's not about, all about the work. It's like, you want to work to become, you know, free. You want to work to become, you know, chill, have, have fun with the boys. And one of the most important thing that I always tell people is that having partners is way more fun than being on your own. And I've seen that firsthand with you guys. And I've seen firsthand with what I was working with Farouk. So like, I always want to be around people and, you know, being a solo entrepreneur, it can be really boring and it can be lonely. Like when I see how you and Kristen and Daniel and Dan just like have all this fun and we have this banter and, and you're all fucking geez. Like you all know how to do your sure. job. So it's like, yeah. it takes a lot of weight off your shoulder. You have just like some real players working with you. So it's just like, you know, a combination of just hanging around you guys and being a part of your community and seeing how everybody in the community respects you. And it's just not just the community, it's the people like in the whole space. You guys have like a big authority. So like, if you want to replicate that, and then that's how you start learning by actually observing these people and trying and asking the right questions. It's like, if you're in client ascension, the number one reason I say join client ascension is because of community. Like just ask the right questions. Don't just go there and not be active and just, you know, do your thing and stay with your student success coach. No, go in there, engage with people, have conversations, especially the owners. Like, bro, I've seen Daniel firsthand is drunk as fuck and he's answering a client and sending like a long ass voice note. I'm like, bro, what? it's, it's 1 a.m. Why are you answering the clients? Like, oh, he has a problem. I can solve it. And that's someone you want to be around. He, that's someone who actually cares about their clients. All the respect to you guys. You guys are awesome. Oh, thank you, bro. I appreciate the kind of words and I know you really mean it. And so it means a lot to me to hear that again, just from the, the fact that like you're from Lebanon and, and you put me on to all these people from Lebanon and, and the change that we can make happen there is it just, it makes this mean so much more than, you know, just a revenue number or an MRR level. And so it's just really cool, dude. And what you said about like hiring Lebanese talent. So like the reason I've hired so much talent from Lebanon, like I said, 16 people across both companies which has probably taken up a majority outside of the U.S., for sure outside the U.S., and almost close to the amount of people we have in the U.S. outside of our founder group. It's because of what you said about, like, how I get along with Daniel, how I get along with Christian, how I get along with you. It's like you're someone, like, I could be friends with outside of business, whereas before, like, just like anyone else, I talk to all types of business owners that hire talent from places like Eastern Europe, Ukraine, South America. And like, these are not people that you're going to be like lifelong friends with, which it's not to say like, that's the ultimate goal of everyone you work with. But like, if you have to get on a call with a bunch of guys that you work with, that you're friends with, and then this other person that kind of makes it awkward and they don't speak great English and they don't really understand cultural references and memes and talking about what's happening, like in sports and the LeBron versus Michael Jordan debate that we always (laughs) like to have or stuff we talk about on our podcast, like it just makes work more like work and more like a task rather than something that you can actually have fun with and and can make your lifestyle. So like working with Lebanese people, it's so fun because you guys, again, are so assimilated with the U.S. culture. And like, I could put you on calls with our clients, with our team members, with anyone, and and they're never going to, you know, blink twice to, to think that you're a VA by any standard. And so it just gives your company an, an elevated look and your team members a more enjoyable experience and culture to work at. So Anyways, there's so much that could be said about Lebanese talent and working with Lebanese team members. It's awesome to hear, like, since you've started this new company, you've already been able to help so many people in Lebanon. It sounds like you said you place over 40 Lebanese people in other businesses already. And so you join Client Ascension, you scaled up an agency. It ends up that that's not the opportunity vehicle you want to be in long term. So you split with your business partner. Your business partner goes on to have success with his new agency. You start your own agency from zero while also maintaining part-time roles at Liskit and Client Ascension. And so the moment everyone's been waiting for, like, how much have you scaled up this new agency to while doing all of that? 
because there's a lot going on. And at this point, we haven't really talked numbers. So it's just interesting to, to hear what does an agency in Lebanon, you know, scale up to? What, what is the potential there? Definitely, bro. So I can say this confidently is that I started an agency within Client Ascension from scratch. And I've scaled it up to 25 to 30K MRR right now. And we still have a lot of these in the pipeline. So like, bro, Client Ascension is the goal. And, and I, I, I say that again, most of it is just from referrals within the community connections within the client ascension community is just it's, it's, it's insane you can just spend marketing and by joining client ascension and then selling people within that community it's just it's just insane bro that says how much we're making right now that's crazy bro 25 to 30k this month in revenue from an agency that you started just a couple of months ago from scratch and client ascension yeah it's it's, it's amazing bro i mean like that, that puts a dent in the gdpr <laughs> of lebanon bro like that that <laughs> Is unheard of in a country like Lebanon, dude. Like, I'm going to tell my dad that and he's going to... Yeah, look, bro, Lebanese people, like right now, with the economy crisis that's happening in Lebanon, that's that's been going on for the past two years. If I make 2K per month in Lebanon, I can live comfortably. I can, you know, get married. I can, you know, start a family. Like, making that much money and being able to affect so many lives is is just, it's just why we do it. Like, that's the reason why we, you know, because if you start an agency, you're already going to think about making money. We're all going to make money. Like, what, what keeps you fulfilled? Is you know helping people around us because like now we have the opportunity to help over forty people in Lebanon making at least a grand per month, which is like super great money right now. And and and, and I, again we owe that all to Client Ascension, and that's why we we're so thankful to be here. And I'm so thankful that God put me in the place, join Client Ascension, scale one agency, and then scale another one from scratch to thirty k MRR almost. So it's, it's it's insane. Bro. 100% bro. And it is crazy because for perspective, like when I visited Lebanon, I have a lot of family there and like my cousins who are around, you know, our age, like they're working brutal hours, like literally 12 hours a day at restaurants, right? Like at busy restaurants where they're being busboys, they're being waiter, waiters or waitresses, they're being hostesses, 12 hours a day, at least on weekends as well. And they're making maybe $400 a month. And that was like last I was there a couple of months ago. So I don't know how much that's changed. But like for someone then to have an opportunity to work, you know, a quarter or a third or, or two thirds even of that amount in a very comfortable location from their computer. And besides all of that, and also making more money, obviously more than double what I mentioned, but also being able to do work that is fulfilling to them and, and helping other people, like being able to provide those opportunities must be so cool. And you, you mentioned like obviously really successful business with in terms of revenue, but like you're someone as well that like you don't get enough credit because you don't talk about it enough for obvious reasons. But like, dude, the way you give back, I know you, you tithe a lot of the, the money that you make from business. I know you, you pay your employees overly well when you don't necessarily have to. And I think a lot of that is, you know, why you're having the success you're having because it just comes back to you tenfold so just continue to do that because those are habits that will really change the world outside of just having a good revenue month <laughs> of course man i appreciate the, the kind words bro it's, it's not just me because like i i knew that this is like a core way to you know make your team happy and you know get good karma in, in life and i've seen that first time working with you because you treat your, your employees really well you treat your students really well like you guys care about everyone around you and you want to see everyone win we ask our employees like how things are with Andre and they all say like Andre's the best guy to work with. Like, you know, Burhan, for example, he's a little kid. He's such a simp for you. And like he gives you like two hundred percent of of his efforts. His dad actually called me and he's like, Thank you so much for providing this opportunity to my son. I don't know who this Andre guy is, but my son loves Andre so much. And like thanks to him, he paid for his dad's surgery, which is like super expensive. And he's helping with, the, with their house and all that kind of stuff. Like he, he actually is going to retire his parents just because of what you're giving them. So like it's, it's just to put things in perspective for everyone. And then and when you said like we work through like an hour per day or whatever with the electricity and that kind of stuff, bro. I'm, I'm not like saying we're stronger than anyone, but it's just like, you know, when you're put in situations, like you got to do what you got to do. And then when you hire people who've been through these rough times and who've been like, they struggled a lot in the past couple of years, you will get someone who's like super grateful for you. They're super loyal. And when you treat them right, it's just going to be a long-term thing. Like they will be loyal for you for life. Yeah. Because like, you're saying that I'm getting not enough credit, but like you also don't get enough credit. And you guys, as Client Ascension, not a lot of people talk about this, but like you actually, like, as I say, I keep saying that, but like you guys care about the people around you. And I appreciate you so much for that. Oh, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. The audience is probably getting sick of the back and forth. Lovey-dovey. 
content and they want to get into some of the the good stuff here no it's been great i'm just messing with you it's been great though both sides right working with each other and what you're doing at remotely x and what we're doing at client ascension but real quick before i ask my last question this question is is more so like if you were to go through the program again or, or even if you were and you probably already do this because you're in the community still but like if you see someone going through client ascension and for whatever reason they're struggling they're not getting as much value out of the program as they could be like you pull them to the side what are some words of advice you give them as to like hey you have all this stuff available to you coaching calls content people like what, what would you say to that person that's struggling to see the value in, in, in a program like client ascension like what would you have them do if you're uh, almost like their coach yeah the, fir- the first thing i would I say to anyone is just join the calls that's the first thing you have to do, join the calls that you actually, like the things that, you know, help your agency. Because like, if you have a partner and you one of you is having fulfillment, one is having marketing, at least join the calls that, you know, relate to fulfillment. Because like me personally, I only join the operations calls because that's all I care about for me. I want to, you know, talk to people who are looking to hire, people who, you know, have questions about hiring, that kind of stuff. It's so like, go on calls, see what people are talking about, try to find, you know, ways to connect to other people. And that's the second thing you have to do, connect, talk to people, you know, engage with the community. It's like the, if you look at the top people who are making money in client ascension, they're all super active. Like they're they're always on calls, they're always texting, they're always in chats, they're always connecting with everyone, they're always supporting people around them. That's that's how you become like popular in the community. That's how you start growing your brand. That's how people will come for you. Because like if you're always in their face, like oh, shit, I'm gonna talk to this person. And if you provide free value for people, they're gonna wanna work with you. So like just get on calls, connect to people, leverage the community. Love it, bro. That's great advice. I think it's as simple as that. Like start connecting with people and the best way to do that is to show up to the calls right because like think about it. if you're an a player like Kanan or myself or anyone else that i've had up here on my youtube channel it's like the first thing you're looking for are other a players and how do you identify an a player in a community it's like the guys that are going above and beyond the guys that are most active in slack the guys that are attending the most calls the guys that are posting the most in the wins channel it's like very obvious things and so even if you're, you don't feel like you're an A player yet or you're getting the results that you know are worthy of being an A player in business, like start mimicking what those A players are doing and the results will catch up. And so I think you need to be that person. I know you, I know this actually, I don't think, I know you need to first be the person before you're worthy of having the results that that person can attract. So I think that advice is great. And my last question here is like, we talked a lot about Lebanese talent and the work that you're doing. And again, like client ascension, would not be where it's at today if it weren't for all the Lebanese people we've hired. Same with Liskit. I mean, Liskit's an even better case study. And I know I have a case study on your website for your agency already, but we should do one specifically for Liskit because it's like <laughs> we have 10 people on Liskit's team all working for us from Lebanon. And because it's like more of a startup, and this is probably relatable for most guys in client ascension or, or younger agency owners, even because like Liskit compared to client ascension is way earlier on. We basically started that from zero. The The margins are way tighter. The budget's way smaller. And so being able to work with people in Lebanon that you can pay a little bit less and you get for, you know, talent in the US or Eastern Europe or Ukraine. And then obviously the output and the quality of their work being on par or even higher than some guys I've worked with in the US. Like that's game changer for a company like Liskit. Like Liskit wouldn't be able to, to be around if it wasn't for for access to talent like that. And so please, bro, for the audience, can you just let them know how they can access talent similar to, to what I just mentioned? <laughs> yeah, bro, like just, you know, just contact me. Book, like you can send me a DM on Twitter. You can send me a DM on Slack, depending on where you see this from. Just like, you know, we're going to put probably in the description, we're going to add the link to my website. Just click on that. You can, you know, watch the case study and then you can book a call with me and we'll definitely help you find the best talents for your agency and it's going to be a lot cheaper for you than hiring someone local amazing i love it bro thank you so much for hopping on and dude this is I, I mean personally my favorite case study interview ever even before we hit record i just think you have i mean at least for me it means the most that your story means more than than all the other guys uh, i love everyone else but like it, it's close to home right because the the fact that you guys joined from Lebanon, dude, I, I never forget the day when I like saw the notification and you guys told me you're from Lebanon. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. No way. <laughs> and like how like proud and excited I was to go and tell my dad that like something we built is now found by these guys in Lebanon. Like, and he didn't even believe it. I, and I remember when I went <laughs> to you guys in Lebanon, he was a little bit like, 
are you sure about this? You really know these guys? <laughs> like, who are they again? So it's just like really just life changing. You said it best. Like it's it's truly been life changing. And so I appreciate you guys taking a chance, you and Ferg taking a chance on a program like Client Ascension and just putting your best foot forward with everything you do, the work that you do, always giving it your best and, and keeping the the standards high and being a good example for everyone else here. So um, hopefully people got some value from this, whether it be from, hey, now I need to go and hire some Lebanese VAs or just cool story that they can get inspired by, maybe for their home country or a country that's fallen a little bit behind that can use help like entrepreneurs. I actually heard this saying, I'll end it with this, from um, the CEO of Salesforce, Mark Benioff. And what he said is is not politicians, but entrepreneurs have the biggest and, and most realistic opportunity to invoke change in the world. And that's an exciting job title to have, a, a job title that actually has the ability to, to create impact and change in, in countries and economies. And that's just what's happening. So I'm pumped about it. And I know we've done a lot of great work, but we still have a long way to go and a lot more we could be doing here. So awesome, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for having me. Of course, bro. Peace for now. Thank you guys for listening.